Cinema. Welcome back to War of Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Par the Collector. What's up, everybody? And I gave you the host. It's the final movie that I picked for Bong Joon-ho's trilogy that we've been talking about. My boy Bong. Yeah, yeah man. Um, after seeing all three of them, mm-hmm. I will say that this this was number two. Number two over what? Uh, it beat Snowpiercer out for number two. Really? But Parasite was the best yeah. out of the three, in my opinion. But this was pretty good. I, I did enjoy this one. You liked it? Um, that there there was certain things about it that kind of like little things that got on my nerves. But the movie overall was good enough that I didn't really care about them by the you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. by the end of it. But uh, this movie is literally like you want to talk about message. Like he has a clear message in every movie he does, yeah. and this one is no different. It's a very good. It's really. It was really eerie watching this because, like, because of COVID. Oh yeah, because this Definitely, is like, the, like I, this is the biggest COVID call out movie ever. I like, I watched this one first time before COVID, and now I watched it again, and I was like, this feels different. This movie feels completely different. To dude, me. it like hits a little too close to home, right? Yeah, like, that's how I felt. Like with the mask it's, and how they were treating him and shit. It like, almost oh feels God. like this should have came out after COVID is not a thing. And somebody wanted to make a movie about COVID. Yeah, man, that's what, what this movie is. What was that like in 2020? Did you watch the host? Yeah, because that's exactly what what it is. Um, real quick, I know you said you rented this. Was it dubbed or subbed? It was dubbed. Dubbed. Or I mean, subbed. Yeah. Subbed. Yeah, mine was dubbed for some reason. Really? I mean, I probably could have changed the settings, but I'm like, it makes it a little easier on me. I've seen it, so I'll... I'm gonna I'm going to look up this man's name because I've now watched three movies. Yeah. Within a month, I know it's saying song something, but Kang Ho song. The guy is definitely the best fucking Korean actor there is, like hands down. Um, but this guy, he fucking steals it in this one too, man. Yep, and I love. This isn't even. I was thinking about this when I was watching it. It's not even a trilogy of Bong Joon Ho. It's a trilogy of fucking Kong Ho song about his fucking range, mm-hmm. like going from. Just a dad in Parasite, and then going to like a uh, a, a technician in uh, Snowpiercer. In Snowpiercer, and then he's like kind of a bumbling idiot in this movie. It's like this dude is so good. I actually looked up some of his other movies, and there's another movie I'm gonna get. It's called Thirst. It's from the director that did um, Old Boy, uh, Old Boy, and he's in it as the main actor. So having those two like work together, I want to watch it now. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that dude can act, bro. Yeah. Uh, he was the best part of this movie. 100%. Um, and I, oh, man. What is this movie even about anyway? Okay, so you know how they, we have like, um, what am I trying to think? Uh, like safety regulations, like we have eco regulations of like how to dispose of hazardous materials and biohazards and shit like that. Right. Well, in Korea, there is a... um. Um, 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 a military base in South Korea. Well, and, there's uh, an American military base in South Korea. Yeah, and that's, that's where. That's where I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the there's two guys. It starts off the movie. There's a doctor, and uh, I'm assuming either another doctor or orderly or a nurse, something like that. Lab, uh, lab assistant, whatever yeah. it is. And he's telling him, um, Mr. Lee. He's like, there's too much dust on these bottles. If there's one thing I hate more than anything, it's dust. And he said, I'm sorry, sir. I'll clean again. He goes, don't bother. You can clean later. He goes, what I want you to do is dump these chemicals down the drain. And he's like, sir, I can't do that. There's, you know, eco regulated. He's like, let's, he goes, he goes in the river. He goes, he goes, the river is broad. So let's try to have a broad mindset about this. Dumping a few chemicals down a drain isn't going to hurt anybody. Not going to hurt any fishies. It'll be fine. And then it cuts scene to this dude or pretty much like, and the, and the last thing he says is he goes, and that's an order. So uh, get on that. Right. And this dude's a full biohazard shit, just pouring shit down. The sh- Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. Yeah. Ble- just all these different, <laughs> you know, chemicals or whatever. So this, I'm not super familiar with, the relationship between Korea and America, but there's a long history and this movie is touching on those relationships. Something like this actually happened. Apparently like America just dumped a bunch of toxins in the South Korea 
you know, water supply. So that's where this comes from. It's actually like based in real history. Wow. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It is. <clears throat> but all these toxins, he, he pours it down and then years later, like it becomes a monster, <laughs> like a ugly, that was the hardest part of the movie is like, he really did not give a shit. If this thing had any marketability, <laughs> they were making action figures of this fucking thing. I can tell you that. Right. And I thought it was super interesting that he, uh, he decided to show the monster, you know, fucking IMDB, like changed their whole fucking website. Have you noticed that? Like they did it in the past like week or so. I used to have the app. I don't have it on this phone. Yeah. Okay. So budget, uh, 40 mil. Well, they have it in South Korean dollars. <laughs> well, yeah. So I'm not even sure what this means, but grossed worldwide. It made 89 million, but I don't know the conversion of Korean, but anyway, it was a low budget film. I know that for a fact, because I listened to Bong Joon-ho talk about this film and he said about 5 million, I want to say, went to the creature design. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. And I mean, it looks terrible, but like it looks it's like a passable. Real like it doesn't look right. It doesn't it doesn't take you out of the film. And that's what I appreciate. Like some monsters or some like CGI is so bad that it kind of takes you out. Mm. This one really doesn't. And it's a very unique design. And um, oh, I was going somewhere with that and I forgot where I was going. But yeah, the budget, it's a low budget film. Right. And uh, yeah. So anyways, the they dump the chemicals and makes this monster. Well, uh, cuts to a guy sleeping in a snack stand and he's sleeping on change. And uh, a girl comes up and she's wanting to buy a candy bar and he's sleeping and won't wake up. Well, <laughs> another guy comes up, an older gentleman. Yeah. And he goes, what's wrong, honey? And she's like, I want this, but he won't wake up. He's like, Oh, he's like, don't worry about it. He goes 75 cent. And he's like, let me get your change. And he lifts his head up off the chain. There's change sticking to his face. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, he takes the change, gives it to her, then just drops his head back down and still doesn't wake up. It's hilarious. <laughs> And then finally he kind of opens his eyes like, oh, you're awake. Now get up. Like, <laughs> And you come to find out it's his dad and them, uh, those two and uh, the guy's daughter. His name's uh, Gung, Gung, Gungku or Gung. Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't, it's going to piss me off. I can't think of his character's name. <laughs> I know their last name is Park, mm -hmm. but it starts with a G. It's like either Gronggu or Gongwu, something like that. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce Korean name. Park Gang Do. Gang Do. Okay. Gang Do. So, yeah, Gang Do and his daughter, uh, Susan, she lives with them and they live in this little, you know, this little snack stand slash like little apartment. Like, you know, it's right. like got bunk beds and whatever. And uh, his sister is a Olympic archer. Mm -hmm. and the brother is a college graduate who's a drunk. He can't <laughs> yeah. find work. Right. All he does is drink all day. And it starts off, the daughter comes in, and she's mad because the uncle showed up to career day. She goes, my uncle was the only one that smelled like that smelled like alcohol and got into arguments and fights with the other parents. And, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's like, he drank and came. He's like, that bum, you know. But at the same time, like, he's – nothing successful so like he didn't even want to go to her career day like he sent the unemployed drunk uncle right at least he had a suit on gang woo and his daughter are watching the sister and she's about to win gold she's hit like two or three bullseyes in a row and all she gotta do is hit one more shot to win it and she keeps holding it and holding it that kind of pissed me off because i was waiting for that to kind of like wrap back around at the movie and I guess it did at the end when she shot the arrow or whatever, but it was kind of like, I don't know. I, I felt it tied in pretty well. Did you? Yeah. I don't know. I, I see what you're saying, though. Like, you wish she would have done more, like, in the middle. Like, the only thing that pissed me off, like, I'm not going to get into it right now because we just started, but, yeah, I'll get to my biggest complaint when we get there. Yeah. But, uh, so she doesn't let go, and she did, she goes over on her time, and she gets bronze. Right. And that's kind of where that leaves. Well, they're cooking squids, like frying squids yeah, f for people. And then people paid for these mats to lay out by the river and they could just hang out and have picnics. And these guys serve them food and stuff. Hmm. Well, uh, 
he rips the leg off one of the squid and he's like chewing on it and stuff. <laughs> and he goes, Matt number four said that his squid was missing a leg. And he's like, he's a liar. Like, he's like, you ate one, didn't you? Don't lie. Yeah. And he like pulls it out. And he's like, oh. he's like, like, the body's good, but the like special part is in the legs and yeah. tentacles or whatever. And people notice that. So yeah. take this back over free of charge. Yeah. And as he does, he notices that there's like five or six people laying by the water or standing by the water pointing at something. And they, you know, he goes over and he's like, what is that? And he's like, Oh, it's this or it's that. And he's like, it's moving. So he takes a beer and chunks it at it. And you see this like little tentacle go up, grab the beer and then it's gone. Well, the next thing you know, this thing just starts popping out of the water, starts picking people up, eating them and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, He's like running, trying to help. Well, of course the daughter comes outside and he grabs her hand and then looks back and it's not her. It's another little girl and his daughter's laying on the ground. She's like the only person within like 25 feet and the monster just scoops her up, jumps into the bay. Well, I skipped over a little bit. Like he chases it, him and a, and a off duty, uh, U S soldier chase this thing. Yeah. Like across the parking lot and a bunch of shit. And, uh, the, uh, the Marine gets cut up and he gets some blood on him. Mm-hmm. Well, he gets the blood from the monster on him. Right. And, uh, they're the only two that came into like that kind of contact with it. Right. So monster goes back into the ocean. Well, then he uh, takes or the river, the I daughter, mean, the he daughter. takes his daughter and goes back into the river. Right. They assume that she's dead and you know, it cuts to the gym where they're trying to get everybody that was involved. Like anybody that was witness to it. So yeah. But it's get, also like partially a memorial. Right. And, uh, that's where they're counting up who's there and who's missing. And, you know, he, they're of course all hysterical, you know, and, uh, so the uh the the uncle comes in, he's drunk, and he's like, How could you let that happen to your daughter? You're the fucking father. I love like, that he fucking drop kicks him, dude. It's hilarious. And that's what I was thinking too. Like that's what I exactly what I was getting to. Like It's such a serious a, moment, but it they brought it found a way to like make the humor not tasteless. Right. Like, well I've seen that in a few like Asian films, like just mm-hmm. kicking somebody is it feels kinda like normal, like not normal, but like you know what I mean? slap on the back of the head. Right. But I feel like over here, if I kick somebody, that's just like super disrespectful. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, you're definitely going to probably have a different reaction out of most people. Yeah, exactly. These two are just two brothers, like, yeah. you know, fighting. That's how I look at it. But, uh, um, but I do like that you said that because Bung Joon Ho, he was in this interview and they were asking him like, when you're writing a film, how do you write? these different genres and kind of put them together. He's like, I don't think about that. He's like, I just write a movie and that's just kind of how it turns out. He, he doesn't purposely put humor in it. He kind of just, that's just how he writes. He writes humor into things. It's like, he's real. it's like, it's almost like if you weren't watching a movie, you're just watching a real person's life. You know what I mean? Like some movies I watch, it's like, you know, that's a character, like Mm -hmm. the way it's written, like, you know, that that's supposed to be a bigger than life type of person or whatever. And then, but that's sometimes like my favorite movies is when I don't feel like I'm watching a movie. I just feel like I'm watching somebody's life. Right. And, uh, like mall rats is a great one for me like that. Like, I just feel like I'm hanging out with these guys for a day. You know what I mean? And exactly. That's, that's such, that's with good like dialogue. And that's why I like Quentin Tarantino's movies so much. It's because when two people are on screen, you feel like it's a real conversation. Yeah. That's like fucking good sex, man. That's like perfect (laughs) dialogue. You know what I mean? Good dialogue is like. And I think he nails it, like because not everyone is super serious all the time. We do have moments of like humor that kind of come through. And sometimes, you know, in grief, like you know, I'm gonna put it to you like this: If you were like the saddest you could be, right? Would you rather cry, you know what I'm saying, and feel yeah. better, or would you rather laugh it off? Like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I feel like laughter. Like when I'm real sad, like I'll watch stand up or something because like sometimes laughing, even though I don't feel like laughing. Yeah. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, I don't know. I feel like it's healthier than crying. Cause when you cry, you feel like shit. You're just going down a black hole. Right. But even with me, if I'm in like a bad mood, I still throw like humorous quips. Like they're mean spirited, mm-hmm. but it's for me, it's humorous. Right. You know? So yeah. And I just feel like humor is, is, is a good coping mechanism mm-hmm. for people you know Definitely. what i mean because 
laughter makes people feel better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is a medicine. It is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine, I feel like. All right. And it makes his movies feel more, like you were saying, natural, like you're really watching somebody. So. Because then the aunt comes in and he's like, look, your aunt brought you a bronze medal. And like, it was serious, but I, like, it's like I laughed because it was like, I get it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're, you know, the dad's just, he's in shock. He's freaked out. And like, he's a fucking idiot. And like, that's what the brother, he's like, stop talking like that. Like, stop talking to her. Like she's here, you know? And like, I get it. Cause they're all upset, but they're all having their own way of, you know what I mean? Right. I just, I, and I've noticed that in all the movies is all the characters, the main characters, like they seem like they're really, they're real, like families or people. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? They don't feel like a bunch of actors. Like it, it feels like you're watching a real family or you're watching real loved ones like argue and fight and live life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like I said, it also in a tribute to him, like he's such a fantastic actor. But uh, so guys come in in the biohazard suits and they're like, is anybody in here touch the creature directly or anything like that? And he's like, well, I got some blood on my face. And they black bag him right there. <laughs> right. So this is America actually quarantining people off. So um, I just wanted to point that out. It's Korean people. Well, it's run by the uh, it's the the American army in Korea is like making all this happen. Mm, right, right, right. Right. So like you do have Korean officers and doctors and stuff, but it's being propagated by the American army. I thought that was crazy. Uh, later on in the movie, like while all that shit's going off in the last act and you can see those two guys, one of them's recording and the other one's writing shit down on a fucking clipboard. Which one? At the end when the, you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, I'll get to it. Later. Yeah, okay. Uh, so they quarantine him and they won't let him go. Well, the uh, well, actually they all get away. Yeah, they. Well, they he's in the office. They're going to quarantine them all together, and well, then they put him in like a, bu- a bubble because <laughs> like there's so many people in this hospital, like they're all slammed together. Well, what happens is the phone rings and it's the like daughter. you can hear the daughter talking, like I'm still alive. I'm in a fucking sewer. I don't know where I'm at. You know, please come help me or whatever. Right. That's when they're like, we got to go get her. So mm-hmm. they bust out of the quarantine. They try telling the doctors. They try telling the cops. They're all like, yes, very important part. They're trying to like let everyone know, like, hey, my daughter's alive. We need to go get her. And they're just like, you're crazy. You're, you're you, your daughter's on the deceased list. Yeah. You know, they keep telling him like, right. Is she dead or is she not dead? And then he's trying to explain like, yes, yeah, she's on the deceased list, but she's not dead. Yeah. And they're like, this man's clearly struggling from the virus. And that's exactly. another thing is the virus, the virus. Yeah. And you get that feel through the whole movie mm-hmm. and uh, that part with the U S scientist or military guy, whatever he is, that's like one of the best parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yep, it's just as I suspected. It's all up here. Yeah. And he's like, the virus is in his brain. He goes, no, he made it up. Mm-hmm. You know? So I thought that was cool. Yeah. But, uh, like I guess I don't want to jump too far ahead, but, uh, they, so they pretty much, they escaped the hospital and the dad, pretty much sells and gives away all the money they have to get a van a, a, a van that looks like a uh, sanitation like a um, sanitizing van yeah. you know what I'm saying like yeah. they were spraying the shit because they think it's a virus they don't think it's a monster they think it's a virus right or the monster caused the virus whatever this is another one of those movies. You know, he said rain of fire you could take the dragons out and make it but This that's how I felt about this one like it's a monster but like it's also talking about like how we treat the how we treat the the uh, the environment and you know about viruses and how like you know it gets out of hand and shit like that. Like, and it shows the incompetence of like the right. the how we would handle. I mean, like we're going through it right fucking now. We're Dude, showing the all the inco- hysteria. I said, man, they nailed the fucking head right. Or they nailed the, the they nailed the hammer right. Or they. <laughs> You want to you wanna help me out, Greg? They hit the nail right on the head of the There you go. I had to take a knee on that one. <laughs> I had to take a fucking knee. You made me forget how the saying goes. It's something about a nail and a hammer. Yeah. It's not how hard you swing. It's not the size of the nail. It's how hard you swing. Oh, <laughs> but it is funny. Like, that's what I was saying is like, because of the whole COVID thing. He wrote this. It's what came out in 2006. 
COVID hit and it's almost exactly, it played out exactly like it did in the movie. Like just craziness. No one knows what to do. It just like everybody. Mass feels, hysteria. Feel, like, everyone feels so incompetent. Don't know what to do. Or half people, half these people are wearing masks under their chins, which is like, I don't know. It was so. Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. I got such a sh- creepy ass feeling. Like, did they freaking, did they fucking invent this from this movie? Right. Like, did the U.S. government sit around and say, you know, that could work. Like, we could do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it would work. And we could blame it on them. Oh, man. No. Yep. Obviously not Korea. We're down with Korea. Who, who do we not like over there? You know? And then, like, boom, China. Yeah, exactly. Boom. It made a lot more sense than I was like, I had to go. I was, I was like, I got to turn my brain off because I won't get any sleep. Yeah, it, it is crazy how hard, how close it hit to home. That's why I thought you picked this one for me because I thought that, you know, but if you said you didn't watch it until you watched it to watch this again, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because if you watched this movie five years ago, you probably wouldn't have put it all. You know what I'm saying? You well, wouldn't yeah, have thought of all the similarities like that. Exactly. And I didn't. I just remember it being a monster movie and the family going and looking for the daughter. Like, that's the right. part that I remember. I completely forgot about the whole virus thing until i rewatched it. i was like holy shit it's because it didn't impact me the first time because- dude i had to flip the fucking movie over i'm like what, what fucking year did this come out <laughs> coronavirus <dude?" laughs> for real like but uh so they escape and they start searching the the sewers like the dad because right. they give him um he also buys a map for like 500 dollars. right that it- gives him the main entrances main entrances to the sewer right and where they all go and yeah, lead yeah, to yeah. and everything like that and uh he gets a couple guns, a couple shotguns. They look old as shit, you know, like they barely work. And he gets some ammo, and like I said, it's all the money he's got. Yeah. And uh, they're riding out, and um, they're trying to get into the quarantine zone because, of course, they walled all that shit off almost immediately. And they get in, and right before right, the last guy they got to get to, he's like pretty much like extorting them. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes me sick. You know, day sung or something like, you know, whatever cleaning. Because y'all hopped in at the last minute, didn't you? Couldn't let us work it or get this money or some shit like that. And he takes the dad's life savings because the, in the first part of the movie, the daughter talks about how shitty her phone is. She's like, I'm embarrassed. I don't even use it in public. Yeah. You know? And the dad's like, what? It's a good phone. And it's like a fucking shit phone. And he's like, look, I'm saving up to get you a new phone. And she's like, you stole that at a grandpa's change jar. <laughs> he's like, so? <laughs> I earned it, you know, and uh, the dad did a great job. Like he he made it seem like he really cared about all of them. I love that part where they're all hiding in the little storage container. And the dad's like, you know, you can't blame him. He's like, he really was a smart kid. He's like, I was a piece of shit and I wasn't around, you know, and like this kid stole to live. He goes, but he didn't get enough protein. So he nods the fuck off all the time. He goes, it's my fault, you know. Don't yell at him. He knows he doesn't know he's like simple, like pretty much like making yeah. excuses for him. But well, like, that's what I was thinking is like it felt like he was just making excuses for him, like protecting him. But he did feel. But I think that's like honestly, like every parent feels like they could do better. Well, it harpens you know? back to so they get into the the um the quarantine area. They end up finding the monster. They're shooting the guns at it. Does nothing. Yeah, it does nothing. And the dad's like, "Anyone got any shells?" Dad's like. Um, was I got one more sad. and then uh, he's like, yeah, I got one more. So he turns around with the gun. He's like, you guys go. I'm going to take care of it. So he clicks. It's empty. Yeah. The thing's like a foot away from him when he does it. Right. And so and it knocks counts. him down and kills him. But it was his sacrifice to save his family because he felt like such a failure that this was his redeeming moment. Like, Way to make up for it. Exactly. Because he had already gave all of his money. Yeah, you he know, has nothing and, left except letting them in a free. snack stand, pretty much. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a real shit. Uh, that was a sad moment because he had just had that great speech before they got chased in. Mm-hmm. But uh, because it was weird because he's sleeping while the dad's giving him this speech about, you know, like it's not his fault and this and that. And they're all asleep. Like he's talking to nobody, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, everyone's nodding off while he's making these excuses. And all of a sudden, the guy that was asleep to begin with, he pops up and he's like, it's watching us. And that, that was another thing that kind of threw me a little bit was like, I was assuming because he got the blood on it that they thought he had a virus and all that. I was expecting him to like, I don't know, like start mutating or maybe that's why he knew it was watching. Like, how the fuck did you know it was watching you? No, it didn't, he didn't say they were watching it. He's like, he's right no, there. He said, he, he said, it's watching us. 
That's what he says. He says it like th- twice. Oh, really? He's like, it's watching us. And the dad's like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's watching us. And then he slides the shotgun through the through the opening. And then it just takes off towards the thing. Mm-hmm. And he shoots it. And it flips it over. And then they crawl out. And then that's when all that happens. Right. And it was brutal, man. Because there's a concrete embankment before the river. Yeah. And that thing knew where exactly where to toss his ass because it had this long suit it's got like four tails but it's got a the main tail which is like what it hangs it does this crazy thing where it just looks like a sack of shit hanging from the bridge yeah and then it just kind of unfolds <laughs> yeah it's kind of like a fish thing i, I like i like the way it goes across like sky or not skyscrapers but like um oh raffles. yeah it just kind of like it, it swings like across flips around yeah. i thought it was pretty unique I thought that, was, cool. that was different but i like I think it just has like two legs and just a long ass tail. It's like flippers, but they're like strong as shit. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like I said, it looked like a fucking turd with like like a, like a leg, pretty much. It, it stared out of this one eyeball on top, and its <laughs> mouth opened like the predator. Oh it yeah, didn't have any fangs? It was just like flaps and teeth, like dinosaur teeth down in there. It's kind of like if a tadpole was in the middle of turning into a frog. And then somebody and then hit it, it just, with a gamma radiation beam. Exactly, yeah. And it turned into like a Hulk tadpole. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great, expla- yeah, that's probably the best way to explain it. Yeah. Because like, I was trying to think of it like through the whole movie. I'm like, what the fuck? That's like, I think he did it on purpose. Like, I don't want to look like anything. Yeah. Literally. Like, give it as, as least amount of detail as you can, but still make it believable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody thinking like, oh, that monster was fucking the whole movie. It stole the movie. Well, he did that on purpose because... He didn't, he didn't want, want the monster to be the focus. Exactly. Yeah, he wanted smart. the family to be the focus. So he went ahead and showed you the monster right out of the gate. So there's true. no question. Because other monster movies, like uh, the one that comes to mind is uh, Cloverfield. Mm-hmm. Like, you never see that monster. Movie, yeah. But that's kind of like what makes it interesting. That's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah well, that's smart. I figured that out. But uh, so the dad dies and they catch... The, the oldest son, the one whose daughter's missing, they catch him. And the other two get away. The the brother and the sister, they get they get away. Right. The army catches the... Right, the yeah. son. And they're up on the wanted posters, and his says captured, and the dad says deceased. And here's where it starts, the little things started to bother me. Okay. This whole movie, I would assume, takes place within two to three weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah, give or take. Once the plot actually gets going, because it shows the two fishermen, and he's like, what the hell was that? He's like, I almost lost my cup, you know? And then it's like two more years from there. And Mm -hmm. it starts off the first one with the doctor and the the guy that pours the chemicals. That's like 2000. Then 2002 is like the fisherman, and then by like 2004 or 6 or whatever the movie takes place, that's when that thing's full grown. Okay. So it's like six years for that. Well, by the time the attack happens, it takes the girl. They get, they start crying. They get put in the hospital. They escape from the hospital. I'm assuming that's a couple days. Yeah. Okay. So then they're searching and it seems like they're searching like the entire city, right? Every sewer in the city. Right. So I would assume that's a couple more days. Okay. This little girl had nothing to fucking eat the entire time. They even said that. She was catching fucking rainwater for, for nutrition. Like, yeah. what was she eating? The other people? <laughs> I mean... I don't know. Little things, like I said. And uh Well, they even made the uh comment. That's why they escaped is uh they're like, What does she had to eat? Like what is she eating or whatever? So she wasn't exactly. Right. But like that's what I'm saying. Like if it took even a week, a human body with water can only go maybe a week without right. food, nutrition. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'd feel like this movie had to at least be two, three weeks long. And it didn't show her eating a fucking noodle or anything she found. When she found the beer, I was expecting her to shotgun that bitch. <laughs> just for some kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she had been down in that hole so long. All she wanted was that shitty beer with her dad. Yep. And I thought that was a good little moment. But mm-hmm. um, And the little kid was touching. Um, and that was another thing. It's like the monster only put some people down there alive. Some people were dead. Some people were alive. I was wondering that because... The grown-ups that he caught were dead, mm. but the two kids that he caught were still alive. Did well, he not kill the them? Little brother. Oh, but it also like harpened back to uh, the coronavirus. Like kids don't get sick from oh, coronavirus, shit. but old people do. Damn, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> That's what I thought about. That's nuts, right? Well, I thought it was well towards the end of the movie. I thought it was because like it didn't like eating dead shit. 
like it was doing it mm -hmm. because that part where it throws up all those bones and shit like yeah. it's a fucking like a a creature that's not supposed to exist so it's probably not built with any kind of like good digestive system or any of that shit yeah but like it seemed like it was eating the dead bodies to get by but it wanted to eat something alive because it kept them two alive until right. it had nothing else to eat okay you know what i mean because even when she tried to escape all it did was catch her and put her down yeah it wasn't until they tried to go back into the hole that it that it that it grabbed them makes sense so it was like saving them like for last, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like this is like my last snack unless I get something else. Right. Um <laughs> because when it tried because when the aunt the aunt find the uh the uncle, he's still out there and he goes to one of his friends who works for the telephone company and he's like, Hey man, you were always a sellout. He's like, Why are you helping me? And he's like, Man, he's like, I got seventy thousand dollars in debt, bro. I'm not even worried about that mm -hmm. shit. So they go up there and he's like, Oh, I gotta go to the office to get the password for you to figure out where the phone call comes. Well, of course the government's in there and they're like, find out where the sister is. And he's like, she you sure you haven't heard from your sister. And he's like, why do you keep asking that, bro? I told you, I don't know where she's at. And of course they pop out. Well, while he's in there and then I kind of thought the guy might've been on his side. Cause it seemed like he was kind of stalling him. Yeah. That's what it seemed you like. Know, and then right before he runs out of the building, he gives him that thumbs up. Like, Hey bro, I did the best I could. Like, I hope you get away. But the thing is, is like, why bring him there in the first place? If you're going to let him go. I don't think it was, I don't think he had, I think they came to him mm -hmm. and they were like, eventually they're going to have to come to somebody here because that's the only way that they're. Oh, so you think it wasn't his choice to. Right. I think him. the government came to him and I said, look, you and this guy are friends. Y'all went to school together eventually he's going to put two and two together that if he traces that call, he's going to be able to find his niece. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm sure the government was just like, we just got to get these motherfuckers back because they could be infecting everybody. Not, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that shit with the kids though, that just blew my mind. I didn't even think about this shit. <laughs> Cause like I said, man, this fucking, it was really weird. It's almost like the government took the idea of COVID from this movie. Yeah. Right. And like that shit just made it even worse. But, uh, so he gets away. He ends up jumping off of a fucking bridge to, uh, or like an overpass mm -hmm. to keep from getting caught. And right before he passes out from a concussion or whatever it is, he gets a text to the sister because we don't know where she is, which that was badass. She wakes up, she's living in a, in a part of a bridge, like a, like a part of the beam. Mm -hmm. It's got a hole, like a man, a man size hole. And she po pops her head out of it. With a little arch. I thought that was pretty funny. She's like looking around. I'm like, who the fuck's going to be up there on a Tuesday? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm sure it's a very select amount of people that are even allowed to be up there because yeah. she's literally walking under that bridge, like, like a maintenance ramp or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Skyline, whatever they're called. Catwalk. That's what it there is. There you go. Um, so she sees the text message because she's having to, like pop her phone into like uh I guess they're like a mobile charger or something or something you just do to check your messages because she's like taking a hoe bath, you know, and she chip pops her phone off charge and then she sees the text message from her brother of where uh their niece is. So she of course runs over there, bow out like a badass, like she's about to go in there and fucking harpoon this thing. She doesn't even get a fucking shot off. This thing closed <laughs> A 40 on her like Ray Lewis yeah. fucking linebacker hit her ass into a fucking hole that couldn't get to her. That little things, bro. Little things about it just <laughs> kind of pissed me off. Like, I don't know. And like I said, the fact that, like the, the, the these kids went without eating like and that like, really bothered you, huh? I mean, I didn't even think about not it. like I wanted the kids to starve, but like it I'm, I got a point to prove with it. I'm oh, not okay, just okay. Like, going off for nothing. But uh, so eventually the. uh the daughter, she's like, man, nobody's fucking coming for us. And like, uh, a bro, uh, two kids, a brother and a little brother are thrown in there. The older brother is dead and she kind of like, she knows and she feels bad for the little guy. So she's like taking care of him, you know? And, um, they're the ones that are the last two left and the only ones alive. And the monster knows that they're alive. Well, they live in this little hole down in the, uh, drainage area or wherever it's keeping them right and it sleeps down there with them well the 
the little girl ties all the jackets, all the shirts off of everybody down there. And takes a baton off one of the cops that got killed. And she makes like a little grappling hook and rope. She finally gets it up there and then she just runs because the monster knows it's sleeping underneath the rope. She runs up, tries to get it. Well, like I said, it doesn't kill her, it doesn't shake her, it doesn't eat her. It just calmly puts her down and sits there. Yeah. And as soon as her and the little dude try to get back in the hole, it turns around and eats them. Yep. Well, it puts them in their mouth, and you think, like, okay, well. Well, it's eating them. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I said, because it's such a, like, a, it's a, you know, a, some, an abomination, something that's not supposed to exist. I'm assuming it took, like, fucking two hours for it to eat something. You know what I mean? From it, like, coughing up the bones, the only thing I can think of is it, like, puts people in its stomach Di- like digest them digest slowly. their like skin and muscle right. and everything and then it coughs up the bones yeah. that's the only thing i can think of yeah i mean that's about it and i mean it, the whole thing was made from chemicals so like yeah. what did the chemicals do they dissolve the shit and you know whatever but right uh so i don't know the it comes out the dad finds where the daughter is he escapes and this is where the covid shit keeps going off even more he's got a fucking syringe that they shot him up with mm-hmm. they gave him like a half a lobotomy i don't know where that shit that was kind of fucking shitty too great scene though the army military guy comes in and he comes in with a korean translator and they're telling the guy like hey, oh this is like the best part yeah. he's like you're not crazy he's like only you and corporal so and so got the virus he goes and Corporal So and So made it all up here. Like he never had a virus. He died from his injuries or some shit in surgery. Mm-hmm. He's like, we couldn't find anything, even in his autopsy, that he had any kind of virus at all. So before he does all that, he pulls the guy to the side. He's like, I'm going to tell you something very top secret. Only a few people know this. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then, uh, like, he tells him all that. And then the fucking. Dad leans over. He's like, what do you mean? No virus. It's like, this is top secret information and you're just telling it like right. out in the open. It was just like showing their incompetence, like how fucking idiots they were. But Dude, and they're sticking that fucking thing down him so they can get a tissue sample. Yeah. And he's like, why are y'all doing this to him? Stop. <laughs> like, and I'm thinking this guy's going to help him, right? Doesn't do shit. He's just like, you didn't call a TV outlet? Government? Humanitarians? Nothing? He's like, nobody would fucking listen. He's like, my words have value too. And that was kind of sad. And then like, they just get up and leave and they kind of like lobotomize him. Yep. And then he just somehow becomes sharper and like more, I don't know, like I said, little things pissed it off. But so he escapes holding a nurse hostage with a vial of blood that they took from him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, who wants virus? I'll fucking give you all the virus. And People are freaking the fuck out. They're getting out of the way. They're fucking opening up doors. He goes outside. The army's out there barbecuing and shit. He's kicking over. He's like, y'all just eating a feast out here, huh? Kicking <laughs> shit over. Starting a fucking car for me. And gets an ambulance and he heads over the bridge. Fast forward to the part. Monster eats the kids. He sees the monster swimming because they're having a big protest because the army's whole um, solution to this is to drop a fucking nuke off in the middle of their town well this harpens back to uh you know about agent orange right mm-hmm. that's all this they is called there. it agent yellow yeah which is fucked up right. that sounds like something <laughs> no think about it though this is something like the fucking u.s government would name it is pretty awful i didn't even think about that but yeah yeah it's shitty <laughs> um so like, of course people are showing up in droves to protest and talk mm-hmm. about how bad it is um the protest is a protest that actually happened in korea i'm not sure the details of it but it's like something that actually happened so right. That's where that like kind of comes from. It's just funny. Like there's so much, apparently there's a lot of like Korean culture, like crammed into this movie. Oh yeah. I'm just not aware of he's, it. Yeah. Uh, he, I feel like he's done it in uh, every movie that we've watched. Yeah. His, well, except for maybe snow. Yeah. I just want to point out that, but the two that have taken place in Korea, mm-hmm. like I've definitely picked up on some of the things, some of the traditions or well, some of the things that they do over there. Hang on, let me get the dog, because I don't want him whining on the fucking podcast. All right, you want me to tell him a joke while you're gone? Oh, you can. Quick, quick joke. So there's a bear and a rabbit. This is actually not my joke, it's a joke Eddie Murphy told in 1986, something like that. Uh, A bear and a rabbit are taking a shit in the woods. 
And halfway through the shit, the bear turned to the rabbit and he says, do you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? And the rabbit goes, no, I don't. So the bear wiped his ass with the rabbit. You're welcome. And Greg's back. That was good timing. And I have a little treat for me for when I'm editing the podcast to hear your, uh, your joke. Oh yeah, it's great, dude. (sighs) Sorry about that. So the wife is on vacation and... The Usually, child, the child was the running a in there. The child was crying because he wants to be in here with everyone. He wants to be a part of the podcast too. But um, so I had to put him up so he couldn't hear him. So, uh, so yeah, they're dumping the agent yellow, and uh, of course, you know the the news comes out and it says that it's not it's not safe for human consumption. Like people can't be there. People don't need to be in the city. And even the bomb says as it's like counting down. It's like. Walk, keep walking until you can't hear this warning. Mm-hmm. And it's like this floating looking like space shuttle looking Pretty thing. Creepy you know? looking. Yeah, it's a, it's like Wally almost. The, yeah. like the white thing from Wally. You know, the other robot. Yeah. Her or whatever the name was. The one he falls in love with. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I like Wally. It's a good movie. It's so good. Um, that's where we're heading to is humanity. Fat fucks in, in hover chairs playing virtual tennis. Anyways, <laughs> I feel like that, too. So <clears throat> it all leads up to the big finale, the big battle at the at the protest. Is the agent or agent yellow going to go off and kill everybody? Is it going to kill the monster? Is it just going to kill the people? Um, is the little girl and boy are they still alive in the monster's stomach? The dad shows up about the same time to fight as the brother. The other brother, he met another bum who all of a sudden just decides to help him. I'm bored. Fuck it. I'll go with you. And they make Molotov cocktails out of like hobo wine and, and stuff like that. And then the sister gets her bow and arrow and she meets them down there. And we're going to need all the skills and all the team on deck to get this thing done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they drop the, the, the yellow, the agent yellow. Right. And it fucks the monster up for a minute because it's meant to literally I think it it's, explains it on the TV. Like you got to be listening. It's something about like it kills every chemical, something within like a twelve mile radius or some shit like that. Right. Pretty much, this thing's made of toxic waste. So yeah. like it was supposed to be made strictly for that, right? To kill this thing, and it's directly under it when this thing goes off, and it just pretty much knocks it out for like ten minutes, mm-hmm. just long enough for him to pull his daughter and this kid out, and they're both dead. No, 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 no. You think they're both dead. Okay. Which is what pissed me off. Like you let this little girl starve for fucking two and a half weeks to three weeks just to fucking kill her anyways. <laughs> like how fucked up is that, dude? That was the thing I did not like about this movie. Like why did this little girl not get to fucking live? Yeah. Like why did you keep going back to her and making her a plot point? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. just to kill her off. She could have just been a faceless child that we could have been sad about. Like you didn't have to get me involved with her as a character. Just to fucking kill her anyways. And you can say what you want about like it made the plot, you know, like it made it, you know, heart, you know, it was the heart of the movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because it is a good message. Like, you know, he lost his daughter, but he takes the little fucking kid in and raises him as a as his own. Right. Um, You know, and that's what the girl did. She was taking care of the little kid because, you know, and I liked that the older brother was telling the little boy. About stealing, like how it's not stealing, it's like what you do like to live or survive. Well, I do love that. Uh, I didn't know the Robin Hood story Mm -hmm. was like a Korean thing, too. Like, I didn't know it was one of those tales that, you know, also gets told in Korea. Right. Because that's what he said. He's like, we're like Robin Hood. We're stealing from them to give to the needy. And uh, the dad said that that's how he survived when he was out running the streets drinking and, and, you know, doing bad. Mm -hmm. He goes that he did the same thing. He would steal to live right? and he would get beaten, you know, and shit like that. But he never complained. He never, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was cool because the dad was like the older brother, like they survived the same way. So like it made sense that he would take that little kid in. Yeah. And that he knew that his daughter cared for that kid. So he wanted to do that in his daughter. Well, because when he pulled him out, the girl had him like, like, yeah, she was holding on to him. That's probably why he lived because she had on it. You know, I don't know. That's how I took it. Right. But it just really upset me that like they didn't let the girl live. Like, I did not like that. I didn't like that either. Because of course the fucking uncle lives, the sister lives, 
Well, I do yeah, love the ending scene. So the uncle is drunk, but he uses Molotov. How do you say it? Molotov cocktails. Molotov cocktails to like throw. So that was a nice little like redemption story Except for him. the last one. He slips out of his aim. <laughs> right. But then the... Because uh, the, the hobo friend just pops out of nowhere with a gallon of gasoline. <laughs> yeah, and just pours it on him. And what 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 I thought was kind of stupid at first, but then it kind of made sense, was the fact that the monster wasn't trying to get away from it; that yeah. it was drinking it. Yeah, that shows because like because it's made out of chemicals, so it was like gasoline. This must taste like fucking Kool Aid or something, you know? Like it was loving that shit. Yeah, it was. And then of course, old girl hits him with the fucking whoopity whoop with the arrow bullseye. Yeah, that's what she I mean. She got her bullseye. She got her bullseye. She hit the thing right in the fucking eye. Yeah, and it burned up. Still didn't kill it. So, of course, it's like, I got to get back to this fucking water. It's the only way I'm going to make it. Well, mm-hmm. the dad, it's a shining moment. Yep. Gets superhuman strength from somewhere, probably from the vaccine. Oh, my God, bro. That was the lobotomy was the vaccine, bro. Oh, is that what that was? I just, that's what I'm thinking now. Because you now you got me. It's like a whole, co- it's like a COVID cover up now. <laughs> that's what this movie is. It's a COVID cover up for me. Yeah. This was the fucking blueprint to COVID. <laughs> Was this movie, bro? I was thinking the same thing through the whole thing when I was watching it. It's just eerie. But I didn't feel that way until about halfway through, bro. But yeah. then I was just like, oh my God, this is what they did to us. Yeah. And there's like just like little, little things, little bro. things that just kept making me like, fuck. But yeah, bro, you remember they fucking drilled his forehead and all that shit. Yeah. And he was fine. He was like fucking clear as a bell, right? Yeah. And then he kills the fucking thing. He takes a sign. Breaks the concrete off like he's fucking Captain America. That's true because at the beginning of the movie, he can barely lift it. Barely. And then he fucking lifts this bitch up like a fucking Avenger. Yeah. Smashes this fucking thing. Knocks the fucking sign off, which is bolted in, by the way. Good luck with that if you do that in real life. (laughs) And it vibrate the shit out of your hands for nothing. Anyways, not the point. Talking from experience. (laughs) Flips this motherfucker around. It turns it into a fucking spear and stabs this thing right through the fucking mouth Mm -hmm. to wherever. And then he's holding it up. Cause like I'm thinking like he's got this bitch braced against the ground or something and he's using all of his body to like hold this thing up. No, dude, he's holding this bitch like you would a baseball bat that you're just fucking with. Yeah. And then he takes his hand off and just fucking lets it die right in front of him, right? Uh-oh. And then that's when he wakes the little kid up and he's like, Are you Susan's friend? Did she take care of you? You know? And then it's a beautiful moment, like I said, because, you know, he took that kid in and now they have each other. And uh you know, the sister had went back to arching, archering, whatever it's called. Archery. Archery. And uh, I think the brother got a job or was doing better. It's what I gathered because they showed pictures of him and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, now he's just selling his little, uh, selling the snacks like the dad was. Yeah, I Raising think he's trying kids. to, he has a new appreciation for being a father. Feels like he got a second chance. Right, exactly. And he's not going to waste it this time. Yeah, because he like cuts all the blonde out of his hair. Yeah, he has he, all he, natural. He just looks like a regular, like older guy. Yep. And he, uh, he's running, he's still running the snack stand though. Right. And yeah. he's he's actually making a real meal mm-hmm. for the kid. Yep. Like, you know, it shows him and the daughter eating. And they're just eating like a new thing of noodles and drinking a beer. And like he's making like a full meal for this kid. Like he's taking it serious. Like, you know, like you said, he's making the most out of his second chance. And that's and that's why I I love this director so much and his storytelling, because that's really the whole point of the movie is you're showing this guy being a bum, not a great father or whatever. And he just grows into this new person that you know, has a new appreciation for life and appreciation for being a father. But also there's political stuff like crammed into it mm-hmm. on the edges. Like you know I what said, I mean? the political and then the, 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 the econ or not the economy, the uh, environmental, you know, like, you, you know, you think you're not hurting anybody by dumping fucking paint down a thing or, you know, by whatever, born bleed, you mm-hmm. know, just dot disposing shit the way you're supposed to. Exactly. Just thinking that like all this little bit ain't going to hurt nothing. Right. Well, like when, Two million people think like that. That's how you end up with shit like this, yep. you know, and I'd like to say that this doesn't happen where we, you know, in America, but I mean, Flint, Michigan, bro, had been poisoning people with their fucking water for years yep. and was letting people go on life now growing three arms out of their ass and shit like, and that's our people. That's not in a country we can't do anything yeah, about. Yeah, it's not a third world country. These it's... are fucking our, these are our people. These are Americans, bro. Yep. And it's fucking scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, I only drink bottled water now. Like, you know what I mean? I close my mouth when I take a shower. I tell my kids to do the same. Like, 
you can wave with bathe with don't you know but even then like people were saying like one dude was like man i've been drinking and bathing in flint water for my whole life he goes they're gonna do something to me he goes am i gonna be able to have kids he's like am i sick i don't know he's like i'm scared of shit he's like i'm scared shitless i know that yeah there's like a whole documentary on Netflix. It's about like the police force in Flint. There's like their one cop to every 2000 people in Flint. Holy crap. Cause like, it's a ghost town now. Like it's nothing but fucking crime and shit. Cause it's a shithole. Nobody wants to live there cause they're fucking dying. You know? Right. There was a thing that the dude had got shot and it took two weeks for the cops to come take a statement because when you get shot and you call nine one one, there's five cops within 16 miles or whatever. So you may not see a cop for two days, bro, because they can only take so many calls. Mm-hmm. And the dude was already from home from the hospital, but bandaged up and then had to react, reenact what happened to him to the cop. So she could fill out a report. Oh my like, God. She's like, well, you know how it is. He goes, man, it's Flint. Y'all never find who did this shit to me. <laughs> and then, like, it was sad, but it was like, he just was like another day to him. Like it wasn't the first time this had happened. Right. And it just made me feel like, bro, this isn't America. This isn't a third world country. This isn't somewhere. This is fucking America. Mm-hmm. And it's just really sad, man. Well, that's why another reason why everyone's leaving California. There's like a mass exodus of California because the homeless population is getting so out of control and the mishandling of the whole COVID situation. Like people are like, fuck this state. They've put people on fucking quarantine like three times, four yeah. times. So everyone's leaving. It just sucks, man. You know, the shittiest thing is, is like when I'm all ready to say that this is like a government made thing and like, you know, I've known people that have gotten it and got sick, but like it doesn't, nobody I've known, like I had my aunt and her daughter, my cousin, they both died from complications of COVID in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's just, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's fucked me up a little bit. Just thinking about it. Cause how can it not? Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like one of those things that's like. It could, it, it's not going to happen to me. You know what I mean? That's how I honestly thought about it. Like, it's like when you hear about a school shooting in fucking Iowa, it's like, well, man, that would never happen here. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Cause like it could, you know, um, but it's just like one of those things until it hits close to home. You just don't, I didn't, I didn't respect it the way I should. You know well, there I mean? was a, uh, there's a good point or a, uh, a point in this movie that kind of harpens on that a little bit. It's a really quick montage in the beginning. But uh, so there's this girl, she's sitting on the park and she's like cleaning her nails with like a bobby pin or whatever. She's listening to like classical music. Mm -hmm. She's in the park. She's living her best life. She turns around and a monster just fucking destroys her. Mm -hmm. And it just like it was just such like a powerful moment to me because I was like, you could be doing anything and your life just comes to an end. Yeah. So quickly just because of something. I don't know. It was just a very powerful moment to me. But you're right. Like you don't think it's going to happen to you until it does. And it just sucks because, like, you know, not just my aunt, but my cousin, like, she has kids. Right. You know, and that, you know, their lives are changed forever, man. It they does lost suck. Their grandma and, and we their can, mom in the same fucking week. The thing is, we can speculate all day, like, did the government do this? Was this, like, a natural thing? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We're still dealing with it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Lives are changed forever. But it's just a scary thing because, one, I have kids, and two, it's just like, if. If the if this is true, if it is true that the government did do this to us, mm-hmm. like that's scary as fuck, bro. It is fucking terrifying. How are you supposed to go on living? You know what I mean, living a good normal life, just knowing that at any moment they could just decide to kill us all if they fucking want to. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It is a pretty scary moment. You know, and I didn't used to think deep on shit like that until I started doing this. So thanks for that, bro. <laughs> I appreciate you. I was but happy these, in my stupid, ignorant bliss over here. Right. You got me thinking you and just shit. Want it, you just want... I just wanted to watch my fucking blockbusters, action movies. Honestly, bro, though, like, I was fine being a perfectly fed sheep. You know what I'm saying? Like, lead me to slaughter, dog. Like, it's fine. As long as I had a good time, whatever. But now it's like, well, I don't want to get in the line now. now. you're questioning fucking life. Yeah, I don't want to get in the line now, bro. Like, I don't believe you. <laughs> That's These are the movies that I like. It makes me question... That's what I say. Things, it, it makes me look at things differently. And this one was definitely the second best one. Like I said, I just I loved Parasite, but uh, this was a good one too. Um, I got Memories of Murder. Mm-hmm. I think I talked about it on the last episode. Yeah, I watched it. Really fucking good. Really. Yeah. I'm starting to think this guy doesn't make bad movies. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I, I tried to watch the Okja. 
I'm, I might give it another shot. I was going to say that one maybe just because we're not kids, but yeah. I mean. I need to give it another watch because I only gave it, like, watched halfway through it. But I want to watch Mother, too. I still haven't watched that one. Right. So what do you give this one? I'm giving this an 8.5. 8.5? Eight 8.5, five? Eight five? Eight five, man. Hell yeah. I give it a highly, I, any of his movies, highly, highly recommend, recommend. I highly recommend this director. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, he's like probably the best kept secret. Well, to us, anyways. Right, he's he's making a name for himself in America, so that's a good thing. I would say that this is we this is probably the most movies we've done with one director, other than maybe Scorsese, yeah. Zack Snyder. But I yeah. wanted to I wanted to give him justice. Like I wanted to do Parasite, but he has so many other great movies too, and I wanted to talk about those as well because I wanted to do Snowpiercer anyway. Right. So. Well, I mean, what are the chances that the three movies of his that you picked are just all bangers, bro? Like that's why I said, like I just don't think this guy makes bad fucking movies. Most of his movies, if not all of them, are great. And like you said, even the Korean ones are well made. They're mm-hmm. great stories. If you if you can get past the reading subtitles, like. I don't see anything like it's just like well you know, memories like, of murder is like his second film and it's damn near a masterpiece so that speaks on like him as some people are just born to do shit you know yeah. what I mean like uh Paul McCartney like, like the guy just fucking sings hits <laughs> you know what I'm saying like Beatles bro like, some people are just made to be badass I mean, and just made to be great yeah and then there are people that aren't and I'm referring to the new Army of the Dead. Have you watched it? I don't ruin it for me. I've not watched it. Okay. I heard it was entertaining. I won't talk about it then. Okay. We'll I'll save it for next week. I was going to talk about it on this episode, but I didn't know if you watched it or not. I've so. been meaning to, bro. It's just I've been working like a bitch. And I plus, ain't... it's like two and a half hours. So is it that fucking? Dude, yes. you know Zach needs two hours, bro. No, he doesn't. He needs two hours to say the story. Three, yeah. if you really want to like it. Well, I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to speak my opinion on it until you watch it, and then we can talk about it. My dad said the funniest shit was the fact that they replaced Chris D'Elia because he's a rapist with Tig Navarro. Um, and they said that alleged. she was terrible, dude. <laughs> C- it, Chris D'Elia is not a rapist. He he just likes hollering at chicks that like aren't 18. Okay. Allegedly. I mean, a lot of people say it. Like, I mean, you can't just call people like race or uh, rapists like that. Like, Chris D'Elia is not a rapist. He allegedly said some things to underage women, but we don't know that. That's true. But hey, that's dude, the, who are you talking about? I like Chris D'Elia. <laughs> I'm just I like saying, like, you, I'm, ta- I don't, I'm not talking about your opinion of him. Uh, I'm not talking you call out calling him a racist like, or a <laughs> rapist. God damn it. He's not a rapist that I know of. Okay, well, he just does. He's Alleged- been accused of doing some inappropriate things. Allegedly, he's a people. huge creep. So that's why they took him out of the movie. Right. And But yeah, they did replace her and it just... I don't want to talk on it. Like I don't even like her as a fucking comedian, bro. And that's not being oh because she's a man woman or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Like it's got nothing to do with that. Like I just don't think she's funny. Does some people like you I'm, have- so, I'm she, she's probably some people's Richard Pryor, but like to me, I I've seen a couple of her stand-ups specials and I've just never been impressed. You don't that's one thing I've learned the older I get is you don't have to like everything and everyone else does. Like um what's the one comedian on 30 Rock? Not Thirty Rock, uh, Tracy. Yes, Tracy Morgan. I don't, I don't find him funny, but to a lot of other people, he's a genius. That's true. But just me personally, I, I don't like him. But you know, that's not to say he's good or bad. Do you like Tig Navarro? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen stand up. She's like, she's all for like women's rights and like empowerment, and that's cool and everything. She had her breasts removed, so when she does stand up, she takes her shirt off. Because, I mean, she looks like a man with her shirt off or whatever, you know, but like, it's, I don't know. It's like an th- empowerment thing, but like she does it at all of her stand ups now. I might have seen I don't remember what the name of, but there was this one comedian that did a lot of like gay pride stand up stuff like so uh, that might have been her. It may be. Uh, I enjoyed it. If that's the same person I'm thinking about. Well, she used to be marketed as like a woman mm-hmm. and now... I think she uh, identifies as a man. That yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I just don't know how that shit's pronounced anymore. I no, know. I know what you're saying. I don't want to get in trouble. Right. <laughs> oh, but you're fine calling Chris D'Elia a fucking rapist, but you don't want to call her a. You know the thing is, is like even when I was like at my height of liking him, bro. Like when you look at him, you get that vibe. 
Oh, 100%. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you it's just like, get it's, that vibe. It's like the, um, so the, what? <laughs> you get those guys with like the mustache and yeah. the glasses, and yeah. it's like, oh, you definitely right. look at kitty porn. Right. <laughs> like, everyone yeah. has, just has that look. Yeah. Like, me with a shaved face. Like, that's not a good look, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Some people look creepy as shit. They ain't nothing they could do about it. Right. Like John C. Riley. John C. Riley is hilarious. But if he was not famous, you would think that guy was going to kidnap your children. Uh, definitely. He like he's, he's gonna, got that vibe. He's going to grope you on the bus. Oh my he, god. He has that look. He's going to smell your fucking breath while you're not looking. Type definitely. Shit. Like, Some people just have that look to him. Yeah. Yes. He's going to steal small things from your home. Like that's, that's the vibe I get off John C. Riley. Like, I don't even know is if he's is who he is now. I don't think I'd still want to be in a room alone with him because he's not a small guy either. He's a big dude, you know, like right. uh, Will Ferrell, too. I've always got a weird vibe off Will, Fer- Will Ferrell, dude. I think he'd be a fucking whack job behind closed doors. You think so? I don't know. He's probably I think he's a super shit. nice guy. Yeah. I, I think I've heard just, a lot of people say that. He's I think we're mostly cool. just talking about like the looks of somebody like your yeah. initial like looking at somebody before you know who they are. You just get vibes off looks. Yeah. Because they of, say don't judge a book by its cover, but it's like, fuck that shit. I know a rapist when I see one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, when you look at fucking when you look at pictures of serial killers online, bro, like, no, who looked at John Wayne Gacy and said, yeah, that guy doesn't kill people. Perfect example. <laughs> Perfect example is I was scrolling through the news feed or whatever, and I scrolled past this one article. I didn't even, like, read the headline. I just saw the picture of the dude. I was like, that dude looks like he lives in Lakeland. I looked over and read the article. It's like, man shoot accused of murder in Lakeland. I was like, well. It fucking <laughs> yeah, looks like a dog. Sounds like a dog, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. I don't know, man. Some people, like I know, like you said, you can't judge a book by its cover. But, like, Brian Passan, right? Hilarious guy. Yeah. Good actor, in my opinion. Yeah, like, and he's a super sweetheart. He'll never be a leading man because let's be honest, he does he doesn't have the looks for it or the know, voice or any of that. You yes, know what I'm saying? Anything. He looks like a golem, like yeah. a, like a gargoyle uh, with human skin. But anyways, but uh, he'll even say it like, yeah, I, I believe me, I know what I fucking look like. I know I look like I would kidnap your child right yeah. now, like or I'd eat them or whatever, you know, grind their bones to make my bread. Or and whatever. it's like uh, 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 Jim Gaffigan, too. He's like, I look like yeah. I'm into I Asian like women. I <laughs> like I spend a lot of time in jerk houses, you know, like <laughs> extra happy ending massages and stuff. And he does. And like Louis C.K., like when I heard that he was paying women to jack off in front of them, like I was like, that definitely seems like something he would do. I don't think he paid them. I think they were just like in a green room and he just whips out his dick and starts jerking off. OK, whatever. I'm just saying. But it seemed like at the time I was like, yeah, it seems like something he would do. Right. Whether he was fucking famous or not. <laughs> How about that parking out there, guys? <laughs> like Louis, bro, put your dick away. And I can't, man. You know, I get for a show. <laughs> Hey girls, what if he, see something you like? What if he? What if he did start like just leaning into it, like coming out on stage and he just has his dick out? <laughs> oh, it was a problem before. And I'm being honest now. Yeah, you know, right. Like, I'm not trying to hide it. It's not a secret. And then it's just like I don't know, man. That shit about Tom Hanks makes me sick to my stomach, bro. I didn't hear hear he, it. He moved away from America, dude, because they said that him and. Uh, like Jeppy Epstein were like best friends. Oh, they're saying that about Bill, Ga- Bill Gates too now. It's a bunch of people, bro. The Clintons, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, but apparently, him and his wife moved to Greece mm-hmm. because pedophilia is not looked at as a crime; it's looked as a sickness. Yeah. So they don't put you in prison; they put you in like a mental hospital, right? If you get caught doing it, and they supposedly like bunch of shit they got off of Epstein's Island and shit. It's got like Tom Hanks and him like fucking murdering kids together and shit or what something. I don't know. It was terrible shit. Allegedly. Uh, right. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's my TV fucking dad, bro. Right. You want to talk about hurting your fucking soul? Well, that's how I felt about uh, Bill Cosby. Like, he was my black dad. For like, sure. I grew up watching That's Ghost Dad, bro. Yeah. I fuck with that. Bill Cosby himself was like one of the first stand-up specials I ever watched in my life. Yes. The fuck you would put in pops and dude, I'm telling you, bro. Like you said, that was our black dad, bro. And it's just like, how could you do terrible fucking shit like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I get like, you can't make your idols like... You know, like they're people too. I get that, but like, like why do they have to make, be fucking terrible people? Right. I understand people make mistakes, but there's like a mistake. There's that goes too make, far. Yeah. There's a difference. There's the. There's always the line, bro. Yeah. There's a difference between doing a 
shit ton of fucking heroin and pushing like life selling it to edge. kids exactly and then there's another thing about like touching unconscious women i don't know I don't know, like I said, I'm not saying that, like, all all mistakes are equal by any means, but I'm just saying, like, I have much more respect for somebody that get caught trafficking drugs than I would somebody that would fucking rape somebody or hurt a kid or something yeah, like exactly. that. exactly, so... Those dudes get 120 fucking years for trafficking weed, but, like, mm-hmm. this fucking asshole gets five years on a slap on a wrist. Some, some of them fucking pedophiles don't even see jail. They just got probation or, or fucking counseling or whatever, dude. Well, I don't know this for a fact, but I've heard people like that when they go in jail. It's not an easy life for them because no. the people on the inside do not take kindly to that at all. No, the threat never goes away. But the, the, the shitty part about it is, bro, is they don't live that bad because they're put in a section with nothing but them. Oh. Snitches and fucking pedophiles because if they're put in general population, they will get fucking murdered. Yeah, yeah. It's a green light on site. If you have anything in your folder that says anything about pedophilia, rape, woman beating, they will fucking murder your ass. I don't know why or how we got here, but I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, that's true. It is getting dark, but, (laughs) um, ah, shit, man. What am I going to give you for next week? Yeah. I have a movie on its way. I'm. I'm going to give you something like off the wall next week because I'm so sick of giving you things you like. Like I've been on this like train of giving you movies you like and I'm sick of it. I, wanted- I mean, I don't think you went into knowing I was going to like every one of them. No, this is very true. I wasn't. I honestly didn't know how you were going to feel about Parasite. So I. Uh, so I just like, I mean, the host, dude, I bagged on that shit when I made my haul video. Oh, this is probably some shit Greg would have watched. I know, that shit had me cracking. And you're like, it's on your fucking list, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop watching Trailer Park Boys, dude. No, you don't. Yes, I do, bro. I won't stop. I can't stop saying Bud. I call everybody Bud now. It's getting on my fucking nerves. Between that and Letter Kenny, dude. Fucking, I love that you're watching Letter Kenny. Give your nuts a tug. Like, I gotta stop, bro. <laughs> that shit's hilarious. Today at work, somebody told me something. I was like, well, what are you gonna do about it, bud? <laughs> I was just like, shut the <laughs> fuck up, Par. What are you doing? <laughs> That is fucking hilarious. I love that. Like, I just fuck with Canadians, man. My uh, mind is figure it out. Like, what am I supposed to figure it out? <laughs> Would you give your nuts a tug? That's one of my favorite. <laughs> fuck you, Shorzy. Fuck you, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me so happy that you got you tech to letter kenny because a lot of people don't they find it kind of dumb or whatever but it's- i love the thing my favorite part of the show was the fucking hockey guys versus the rednecks yeah the farmers that shit was too funny well that's the opening scene <laughs> and they're going the farmers are just laying into these fucking hockey players and Who they takes keep- your shirt off and leaves their sunglasses on for a fight <laughs> <laughs> we want to have a donny brook boys and I and the wife was like, oh, "It's not funny." I'm like, "What are you talking about? That was like gold." That was gold. Look, man, we can't be like Gretzky. Hey, shut your fucking mouths about the great one. <laughs> <laughs> Give your nuts a tug, fuckers. Nobody's talking about the great one. You goddamn right, you're not. <laughs> Sixty-seven active streaks and records. Give your nuts a tug. <laughs> Shorzy's not in it enough. Oh, no, dude. They could literally make a whole show on Shorzy. <laughs> um, I have a short list of things you can pick from. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh, Death Wish remake, which Bruce Willis. Ruthless People. Borat. Catch and Release. Out Cold. Grown Ups 2. Predators. Um, running Scared. No, we did Running Scared. Yeah, we we need to redo Running Scared. That's, that's the thing. That's what you said you wanted to. Yeah, that's why I left it on there. Oh, we just did Reign of Fire. Mm. Empire, Out of Sight, and Push. Mm. This is the small list that I have. I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna go Empire, just because I want to get back on my gangster shit. Yeah. John Leguizamo movie, Pretty Fire. Well, I don't know. It doesn't make it into my top 10 gangster movies, but there are elements to this movie I enjoy. I realize, you made me realize, like, there's a lot more gangster movies that I have not seen, so. This one's cool. It's even got Fat Joe in it. Nice. And he actually act. Like, he doesn't do a terrible job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember when that movie came out. I was was working at a movie theater. Mm. (laughs) Northside. Mugs movies. What mugs? Oh. I was in like elementary school when this movie came out. Right. Still badass though. Nah, I think I was in middle school. 
Yeah, something like that. Hell yeah. But uh, um, yeah, we'll do Empire next week. All right, we'll do Empire. But first, real quick, um, we talked about it before the podcast, and we I've we've been entertaining the idea of doing like a Patreon and maybe doing like special content, but we're not really sure what to do. So yeah. if you're still listening, you obviously like listening to us, and right. if you want to see more special content, maybe possibly, yeah, let us know. Go to YouTube. Like, type in what you would want. Like, I've entertained the idea of doing, like, deep dives on movies, like Sucker Punch, for example. Doing, like, a, an analysis deep dive on why it's why I think it's such a great movie and stuff like that. I'll come over and hang out with your mom. You know, <laughs> like, you know, whatever you guys want. You know, we want y'all to be happy. This right. is for y'all. So if y'all have any ideas of what y'all would want to see content-wise from us, just leave a comment. Let us know, and we'll see what we can do. Please do. Hell yeah. Because we would, we'd love to do that. For yeah. You, you know, for y'all. Exactly. But and, uh, uh, yeah, you said it before, man. Like we had a little milestone the other day with streams and views and like I, I just feel real proud about it, man. I, yeah, we have a small little following of audiences. So I kind of, that's why I want to do this. I want to like give back to you guys, like give you guys more of stuff that you would want to see from us. We're going to try to, we're going to try to work to get some merch. Like. So we've been doing this for two years. We need to get something. I know out. we just hit our uh, two year anniversary like a few days ago. I know. I was just looking at it. It came up on my timeline the other day. Right. It was one of the little things, the little promo things I was mm-hmm. doing. I was like, wow, that was two years ago. Yep. Two years. We've been doing this for two years. So it's probably to, probably time for us to like step up our game and put it's, more into it. It's been a fun ride, bro. And it doesn't even feel like it's been two years. It doesn't at all. When you're doing what you like. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't feel like work. Well, it probably does for you because you do all the real work, but I've had a blast, man. And yeah. I'm, I appreciate you picking me to do this with you. Hey, no problem. I'm If I was going to do it with anybody, I'm glad it's with you. As like cheesy as that sounds. Ah, man. It makes me feel a lot special, bro. I yeah. appreciate that. But, uh, but anyway, like I said, leave us a comment on things you would like to see from us. But next week we'll be doing Empire. We love you guys, man. We'll see y'all later. <laughs> later. Later. Later.